Okay, so hello everyone. Um, my name is Martin Kuba and I work as a software engineer at Red Hat and I spent the last few years working on Quarkus. So um, today I'm going to talk about Quarkus and gRPC. Um, first, I would like to give you a short introduction to these technologies, but it should be really just a very briefly um, brief description. And then uh, we'll create our first uh, demo application and uh, run our application in the development mode and show some of the cool features uh, we provide in Quarkus. So, okay, uh, we only have 20 minutes, so we should <laughs> probably stop. What is Quarkus? So uh, you can find a lot of talks and presentations about Quarkus uh, in the world. Uh, those presentations usually start with supersonic subatomic Java description. Uh, I prefer the following two sentences when I try to introduce Quarkus to Java developers. So first of all, it's a built-time oriented Java stack. Uh, the fact that it's built-time basically means that most of the magic happens when you build your application. And we call it Java stack, not Java framework or anything like that, because it's basically a set of tools and APIs and runtime bits. So it's kind of uh, hard to define. And the other sentence is that it's crafted from the best of breed libraries and standards, uh, which basically means that we don't always try to reinvent the wheel, but instead we use existing libraries and APIs and, and standards and so on so that users don't have to learn the new stuff. So as an example, uh, we use CDI API, we use JAXRS, Hibernate, and, and a, a lot of other libraries. Uh, this is, of course, sometimes challenging because not all the libraries are ready for the, uh, let's say, build-time oriented uh, world. So uh, we believe it's worth the effort because the the fact that we use this uh, or we try to do the build, stuff, build time stuff means that uh, we can provide you an application that's really fast to start up and um, lean in, term of, in terms of memory consumption. So this is the last slide I have about Quarkus. It's a comparison of a traditional <coughs> sorry, runtime framework and Quarkus. So as you can see, usually a library, um, when it does some magic, or I, I call it magic, but it basically means that it has to do some uh, discovery and, and uh, for example, read the descriptor files, read annotations on your classes, build some component model, and so on. Uh, usual runtime frameworks do this uh, when the application starts. On the other hand, Quarkus attempts to do as much as possible during the build, uh, which basically means that we can start your application instantly. And we, we can also throw away a lot of stuff that is not needed uh, anymore because, uh, for example, if, if, you, if we need to parse an XML file, uh, we do this when your application is being built, and then we can throw away all the classes that, that are not necessary. So that's all about Quarkus, but uh, what is gRPC? Well, gRPC is an open source project. Uh, it was originally uh, invented by Google, and it's a high performance uh, RPC framework where RPC stands for remote procedure call. So you can think of it as an alternative to, for example, REST APIs. But the target or the goal of this technology is to be more efficient and more performant. Uh, it works with many languages, uh, including Java. Uh, it's a contract-first technology that's really important because it basically means that uh, before you start exposing some services or consuming services, you need to define or know the contract. And the contract is, uh, in gRPC, defined via protocol buffers, uh, which is, again, a Google technology. Um, and it provides uh, a syntax to define the services, but also uh, it defines the way that your messages uh, are serialized and deserialized. And important thing is that this format is binary, which means that you cannot 
use, uh, for example, text editor to inspect your messages uh, that are sent over the wire. And it's also built on top of HTTP2, uh, which is uh, another important <coughs> thing to know, because, of course, uh, again, you will not be able to use the, the tools that are, for example, um, that you are, for example, used to uh, use when developing REST endpoints. Uh, it supports unary requests, which is uh, the traditional or classical request response style of communication, but also streaming. And we're talking about client side streaming, server side, and even bi directional streaming. And uh, we'll show the server side example in our demo. So, <coughs> there was just a very brief introduction to those technologies, and then and we have the demo time. So um, here are two links. The first one is um, a link uh, that points to the repository, uh, which contains the final version of the application, uh, basically the result of our demo today. But we are going to use the second link, uh, which points to code Quarkus IO. Uh, this is a very simple <coughs> web generator for project skeletons. And we are going to... Uh, generate a skeleton uh, that will use gRPC extension. So I'm checking out this gRPC extension here. Uh, at the top of the page, you can define some basic configuration of your application. So I'm going to uh, use a different artifact ID, they've gone 2021. I'm using Maven and start to code uh, is included, which means that some of those extensions Contains contains some example code that can be uh, that can be evolved in time. So I'm going to use the starter code and gRPC extension. Uh, you can notice that it's labeled as experimental here, uh, which basically means that the API is not considered stable in terms of uh, it could evolve in time in future versions of Quarkus. But you should not be afraid of this because, first of all, it does not necessarily mean that the extension is not uh, production ready. Uh, and we also have um, migration nodes for every minor and major version. So uh, you can just uh, migrate, migrate your application easily. So now I, now I can hit the generate application button and download the zip and open this uh, in my ID. But I'm going to save some time. I'm, uh, I already have it imported in my ID. Uh, as you can see, it's a very uh, standard Maven application. We have some POM XML uh, Maven wrapper that I'm not using, but our standard source main, uh, Java, etc. Uh, as I said before, gRPC is a contract based or contract first technology. So uh, we use protofiles, or it's a standard way of gRPC to define the services. So in this code start, we have a very simple uh, protofile that is uh, located in source main proto directory. I'll open it. As you can see, it's a simple text file. Uh, the syntax is quite self-describing. Here we have a service uh, just called hello gRPC. And it declares one method is uh, named say hello, accepting hello request and returning hello reply. So this is the simplest possible uh, type of operation, uh, so-called uh, unary operation. Uh, we'll add a server-side uh, streaming example later. Okay, so we have a portal that's nice, but uh, in order to be able to work with this contract, uh, we need some Java classes, right? So it's important to know that uh, some of those Java sources are generated automatically for you, so we don't have to do anything. And these classes are located in the target uh, generated sources GRPC directory. Um, some of these classes are Quaku specific, but most of them are um, just uh, regular stops uh, generated from uh, the library, which is called gRPC Java, the, the official one. Um, if we look at the, at the source, it's not very nice. Uh, it lacks some commands and so on, and so on but fortunately, uh, you won't have to use most of the methods here. 
what I'd like to show you is this one, which is much more simple, right? Uh, this is a Quarkus specific bit. Uh, it's uh, something we call service interface. And it basically reflects the, uh, the service definition that is uh, declared in the protocol. So here, uh, for every service, we define some interface. In this case, it's called Hello gRPC because our service is called Hello gRPC. And we have a method here, say hello, uh, which accepts the hello request. And uh, it returns a uni hello reply. So you might wonder why uni, what it, what it actually is. Well, uh, gRPC is by nature asynchronous, and uni is an asynchronous type. Um, it's coming from a uh, mutiny library, which is a reactive programming model we use in Parkus. Um, it's based on reactive streams, but it has its own navigable API. Uh, we'll show you later. OK, so we have this service interface that is generated. But now what? We should probably show some application code, the code that contains the business logic. So it's actually very simple. <clears throat> this is our service implementation. So it's a Pojo, it's a normal class that implements our interface, our service interface. Uh, and it's annotated with a special annotation uh, at the gRPC service. Uh, this annotation basically allows Quarkus to discover all the services that should be registered automatically. And then we have the implementation, which is really simple in this case, because it's a basic whole world example. So we just create the, the asynchronous type uh, from a string value. And we use the generated hello reply class, which is the uh, that class uh, generated by gRPC Java. OK, so this is a very simple implementation. But now, how do I actually test whether it works or not? So uh, like I said, protocol buffers is a binary format, and it, gRPC runs on top of HTTP2. So it's not so easy to use and to test. But fortunately, we have something in Quarkus, which is called um, development mode, uh, where you basically run your application in a special mode that allows uh, cool features such as uh, live reload, where you can basically change your classes and uh, uh, all your changes are immediately visible uh, in your application. And this development mode also, uh, also includes something we call DevUI. So DevUI is basically a very simple web app uh, that is part of your application when you're on it in the development mode. And extensions can contribute some functionalities here. In our case, we are looking for the gRPC extension, uh, which can list the, all the services we have here. And we can even test our gRPC service. Uh, as you can see, we are using uh, JSON, specified messages. And underneath, there is some magic that transforms uh, the JSON automatically to protobuf types. OK, so we have this uh, say hello, let's test it. And it seems that it works because we sent the name foo. And the response was hello foo. Uh, so if you look at the implementation, it's, it's probably OK, right? Uh, one nice thing is the or nice feature of the development mode is the live reload. So just to demonstrate how it works, I can modify my class, save the change, and switch back to my uh, switch back to my development console or that UI and just reload it. And if I send the message again, I can see immediately that the result is not hello foo, but hi foo. And what happens is actually that uh, Quarkus detected that you changed the class and it reloaded the application or restarted the application. Uh, for you. So this is how life all works. OK, so um, the development mode is nice, but sooner or later, you'll probably need some way of um, testing your application or services in, in an automated way. So of course, you can write a test. We have one generated here. It's a regular GMD5 test. 
except, uh, except that it's annotated with this annotation at Quarkus test, which uh, basically binds a special algebraic extension that starts Quark Quarkus underneath. Uh, and this test can also inject beans and other components from the application. So in this uh, case, we are injecting uh, Hello gRPC service interface again, but uh, this this time it's not the service that we implemented, but actually it's something that is automatically configured uh, for you so that you can uh, call gRPC services. And in this case, because it's a test, uh, it's even uh, also configured so that you don't have to provide anything like host or port or anything. So we just inject our service that was implemented uh, by our class, and then we can simply call the method here. And uh, the generated client under the hood will basically send the message to our service, and we can then start uh, the reply, which is really simple. Now, you can use uh, the usual you know, ways of running this test, for example, uh, maybe shoot fire from command line, your IDE, whatever, but uh, there is another uh, neat feature we have in the dev UI, uh, sorry, in the development mode, and it can be started from the dev UI, uh, which is called continuous testing. And it basically means that uh, when you enable it, it's disabled by default, uh, I've just enabled it. Uh, if you enable it, uh, then all the tests are run in the background. And afterwards, whenever you change a class that is somehow involved in your test, we run the test whenever you change the class. In this case, uh, we run the test and then we have something, uh, a message in the test field. So we can take a look at what happened actually. And it says, okay, we expected hello new, but it was high new, which is kind of expected because as you remember, we changed the message to high previously. So I can now change it back to hello, hello, sorry, save the class. And now if I reload my UI, because it's sometimes <laughs> it's a bit complicated, I can see that all the tests are now passed. And I can see that, okay, my test was executed automatically because it detected that uh, the class was changed and everything is okay. Okay, so uh, we have the test, we showed the continuous testing and, um, and the UI. Now it's probably time to add some more stuff. So we're going to uh, add a server-side server streaming example. I'm going to create two more message types, member request, uh, which will have um, sorry. and number reply because I want to add a new method that actually uh, returns some random numbers and it will return them in a stream. So, so this should be count. Let's say we have a reply that contains index and the actual value. Now let's add this method. So it's a RPC method. Let's say it's stream random numbers. Uh, it sets oh sorry number request and returns a reply. So there's one more thing I need to add because we, we said that we want to uh, produce a stream. So I'm just to use a keyword stream. So this keyword basically means that when we receive the number request, we will produce a stream of number replies. So we changed our profile because it's a contract first technology. Now I need to refresh my project because I need to uh, uh, generate the appropriate um, sources for my, for my new method operation. Now I can take a look at my, um, Sorry, it takes, <laughs> takes a little time. Okay, I can take a look uh, at my implementation service and now it says that my interface changed because we have a new method here. 
In this case, it is using uh, an asynchronous type that's called multi. Uh, and it basically means that we are returning a stream of number replies. So I'm going to implement this method. Uh, as I said, I want to produce some random numbers. So I'm going to just use the random class from JDK. And now I am creating a multi. So I need to create a stream. Uh, we'll create it from Tix. Tix means that I want to produce a new message every, in this case, for example, every second. And when I create a tick, I will map it. Uh, so for every tick, oh, sorry. Uh, for everything, we are going to produce um, a new number, random number. So we are going to use uh, the builder of uh, number, apply new builder, set index. Index means uh, which, which uh, random number we produce. So I'm going to use the big, just plus one because it starts from zero and set the value which is the random next integer, let's say one numbers from one to uh, 100 and that's it. Now we need to add one more thing because we only want, we only want to select the first n requests. So we just use the count. Let's a little bit so that it's more readable. Okay, so we basically say every second create a number reply and the, the value is the random number we produce. So I'm going to save this class and everything should be ready now. So I'm going to go back to my dev UI, to my services. Uh, Hello GRPC now requires two uh, two operations, and the new one has is streaming server side streaming. Okay, and I can test it. So I'm going to uh, specify the count to two so that two random numbers are generated. So let's send it, and it seems to work. Cool. Now uh, we also have a test prepared for this, so I can. So I'll comment this one because I'm prepared so we can save some time. And the nice thing is that when I add the test and continuous testing is enabled, I can immediately see whether my test failed or passed. Okay, so that's it. That's all I have today. Uh, of course, if there are any questions, feel free to ask. And also Quarkus is an open source, so feel free to contribute. Um, here are the pages. We have Quarkus.io website. Uh, there is a Twitter handle and to a chat that is used for communication with community. Thanks, Martin. Thanks for this wonderful session. Uh, any questions for Martin? No questions, probably. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thanks, Martin, once again. You're welcome. Uh, yeah.